dear Michael. There you go. Morning, friends. <clears throat> Welcome to worship. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, as we gather to worship, we continue to uh, a practice that was started following the truth and reconciliation process, and that was one of the recommendations from the TRC that we acknowledge the territory that we meet upon. And this is continuing an ages old tradition of First Nations people when they would meet, they would acknowledge one another's territory. And so I live, work, worship and play on the traditional territories of the Stony Nakota people who are my neighbors. And they are made up of the Bears Paw, Chiniki and Wesley nations. And all of the other nations that came into Treaty 7, as well as the Métis, uh, Métis Nation Region 3. And today, Lisa is going to be acknowledging our territory, your territory. So we begin today by acknowledging that we walk and meet upon the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples. We recognize their history, spirituality, culture, and stewardship of the lands. We all, would also like to acknowledge that these are the treaty lands of the Williams Treaty. We acknowledge this land and the people because first steps to real reconciliation is recognizing the existence of Indigenous people. A shared understanding of our collective past will help us walk together into a better future. Thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> If you have a candle handy, I am going to invite you to light it along with me. <laughs> Hopefully your uh, matches are lighter or better than mine. Mine just broke there. By lighting a candle when we meet, we are remembering that it is Christ in whose presence, oops. Oh, it is actually lit. I wasn't sure. <laughs> it is in, in Christ's presence that we meet and have our life together. Today is also Communion Sunday. And so I am hoping that you have your juice and um, bread handy to, uh, to celebrate communion all together. The light of Christ and our sharing of communion is a very powerful symbol of how even in this dispersed time, we are one and come together to worship Christ. Michelle, over to you for our welcome. Welcome to all who join us today, wherever you are. Here at St. Andrew's United Church, our mission includes inspiring faith, 
practicing compassion and building connection in our community and the world. And we have a vision to be courageous, creative people empowered by the spirit to practice love, reconciliation, and justice with authenticity. To be a spiritual home where Jesus' love for all is visible as we serve our diverse and multi-generational community. Thank you. And just a couple of announcements. Uh, First of all, I, I am... Glad to see that we have 59 folks who have signed in this morning. There was a a technical glitch. Apparently, a number of people did not get the the, uh, order of service. uh, And we think it may have been connected to simpatico emails. So uh, I am hoping if you see that someone who usually is here is not here, you might want to text them <laughs> and tell them to look at last week's order of service or go to the website to get the, uh, the sign-in information. And pardon me, I think I might have a message here. Um, nope. I also wanted to just explain the technical glitch last week. I invited folks to participate in the prayers last week by using the chat function. We didn't know that the chat function was only working for the um, the co-hosts. <laughs> That's been changed. <laughs> and you're going to be invited again <laughs> to use your chat box. Um, and it should work this time. I think a number of you thought, my computer's not working. It wasn't your computer. <laughs> and so if you, uh, you can begin thinking about if you have people you want to lift up in prayer during the prayer time, um, you could even write it into the chat, those of you who are on computers, and just not, not press send. It could be there ready to uh, either initials or first names of people that you want to lift up in prayer. And... Michael, you have raised your hand. Would you like to? Yeah, I just want to, the, the meet link. Okay, is it the same every Sunday? It is the same every Sunday. Okay, so that's fine. Then, then the only thing is the order of, okay, good. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. So friends, uh, uh, that was one of the things I wanted to say. Next Sunday, that was the other thing I wanted to say. Next Sunday is Christian Family Sunday. And the Mission and Service Fund has um, put out a special Mother's Day appeal where folks can give um, a unique gift to the Mission and Service Fund that is focused on the well being of children. And the Sunday following that is World Vision Sunday. So we have a lot of unique Sundays this month. I'm going to invite you for a moment uh, with passing of the peace in mind to scroll through your, uh, those of you who are on computer, scroll through the tiles just to see who's here and to do a namaste, peace be with you, or um, a prayer, fold your hands in prayer and just indicate to one another that we are passing the peace of Christ to one another. Peace of Christ be with you, friends. Lovely to see you today. And we are up to 64 sign-ins, so it looks as though most people have found their way here. Today, Lisa Bruce has agreed to be my co-worship leader. She's already done the acknowledgement of territory and through the service, she will be reading the congregational responses. And so for our call to worship, uh, Lisa and I are going to be reading it together. We gather in the presence of the one who abandons no one. Come Holy Spirit, our advocate and comforter. All are welcome in this sacred place, made holy through your presence with us. Open our hearts and minds this day. Guide us into a loving relationship with all your children. 
We gather as God's beloved people, leaving no one outside. Spark us with a word of life and radical belonging, a message that we share with others as we seek to live out Christ's life. We call on the name of God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. Amen. And we sing together. Wow, a few of us would have grown up singing this, the first or second verse, for first verse or first and second verse of this in our childhoods. It certainly was part of my childhood. Every single Sunday morning, we would sing, holy, holy, holy. Let's sing verses one and four with Michael. to come together in a spirit of confession. I've mentioned in the last few weeks that we've moved the, the prayer of confession from later in the service to earlier in the service. And the rationale for that is that early in the service, we, are, we have brought our entire week with us. And while I hope that much of what we bring with us into worship is positive from our week, we are all living with the strain of continuing to be in the pandemic and to, for you folks in Ontario and for me here in Alberta, we are sharing um, notoriety that's not great, <laughs> that both places are, um, are hot spots for the pandemic. We bring a lot with us into worship and by taking time um, in a spirit of confession, we lay all of that out before God. And the confession words that I'm using are traditional. When we come before God in confession, we are bringing our own stuff, but we are also acknowledging that perhaps the most powerful evil in the world is systemic. And so as we say these words, we acknowledge not only our own complicity in the wrongdoing, but how we are part of systems that hurt our sisters and brothers in the world. And so I invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession and in a time of silence where we bring our confession, our personal confessions to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. And in a moment of silence, we bring our confessions to God. Friends, hear words of grace. Forgiving God, help us to trust your spirit's work to make us whole. Together in relationships of mutuality and partnership, in sacred rhythms of giving and receiving, knit us together to be your healing presence in the world. May it be so. I have a storybook that I would like to share with you today. And I'm just going to go into screen share here. And you can see the pictures. I thought that this book really, whoops, that's not where I want to be. There we go. You Are Special by Max Licato. My husband was walking around. He saw the story that I was going to be reading with you today, and, and he was he was speaking with a deep southern drawl. <laughs> what are you, why are you talking with this deep southern drawl? Well, apparently, Max is from Texas. And he has heard, Greg has heard him in person. <laughs> I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to tell this story in a deep southern drawl, though. This is a story about the Wemmicks. The Wemmicks were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli, and his workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall, others were short. Some wore hats, some wore coats, but all were made by the same carver and all lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of gold star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. And up and down the streets all over the city, people spent their days sticking stickers or dots on one another. Now the pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got stars. But if the wood was rough and the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave each other dots. The talented ones got stars too. Some could lift big sticks or jump over tall boxes and others knew big words or could sing pretty songs and everybody gave them stars. And some Wemmicks had stars all over them and every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else to get another star. Others though could do little and they got dots. Punchinello was one of these. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes he fell and his wood got scratched, so the people would give him more dots. And then he, when he would try to explain why he fell, he would say something silly and the Wemmicks would give him more dots. After a while, he, did, he had so many dots, he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he'd do something dumb. And then he'd get another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots, some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots. The wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had a lot of dots. He felt better around them. One day he met a Wemmick who was unlike he'd, any he'd ever met. She had no dots and no stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Others would look down on her for having no stars, so they'd give her a dot, <laughs> and it wouldn't stay on either. That 
that's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone else's marks. And so he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. Oh, it's easier. Easy, Lucia replied. Every day I go and see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? asked Punchinello. Why don't you go find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemmick, who had no stickers, turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. Uh, Lucia didn't hear. So Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around, giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself. And he decided to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop, and his wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch to his, on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as an, his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here, he said to himself, and he turned to leave. But then he heard his name. Punchinello. The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come, let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name, the little Wemmick said, asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm. The maker spoke thoughtfully as he looked at the gray dots. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I tried really hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? Punchinello said. No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you're pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My paint is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I came because I met someone who had no marks, said Punchinello. I know, said Eli. She told me about you. Why don't the stickers stay on her, Punchinello asked. The maker spoke, spoke so softly because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? said Punchinello. The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. Uh, I'm not sure I understand, said Punchinello. Eli smiled. You will, but it will take some time. <clears throat> You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come to me, come to see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you are special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his thought, heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell off. The end. I'm going to stop the share. And I would invite all of the children of all ages 
who have listened to this story with me to say a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we know that you are like Eli. You made us, you love us. And if we remember every day that we are special to you, all of the dots and the stars that other people give us just won't matter so much because we can live and love and grow in your love. Thank you. Amen. And we're going to sing number 344 in Voices United. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds. We're going to sing verses 1 and 5. today is Mary Lynn Smith, and she's going to be reading our passage from the Gospel of John from the message. Hi, good morning. The scripture today is from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8, the vine and the branches. I am the real vine, and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes, and every branch that is grape-bearing he prunes back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me, make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce anything. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me, and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Marilyn. Friends, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Gail O'Day is the author <clears throat> of a biblical commentary on the Gospel of John, and these are her words. The image of community that emerges from John 15 verses 1 to 17 is one of interrelationship, mutuality, and indwelling. To get the full sense of this interrelationship, it's helpful to visualize what the branches of a vine actually look like. In a vine, branches are almost completely indistinguishable from one another. It's impossible to determine where one branch stops and another branch starts. All run together as they, continue, they grow out of the central vine. 
what this vine image suggests about community then <coughs> is that there are no freestanding individuals in the community but branches who encircle one another completely. The fruitfulness of each individual branch depends on its relationship to the vine, nothing else. To live according to this model then, the church would be a community in which members are known for the acts of love that they do in common with all of the other members. It would not be a community built around individual accomplishments, choices, or rights, but around shared accountability to the abiding presence of Jesus and common enactment of the love of God and Jesus." End quote. As I envision these branches completely encircling one another, I'm wrapped in this feeling of protective love, kind of like snuggling up with a prayer shawl on a tough day. As communities of Jesus followers, there should be a sense of close connection that that sense of wherever you are, whatever your circumstances, whatever difficulties you're living with, you are a beloved child of God. You are special. And you are held in the love of a community that understands itself as fed and nurtured by the life-affirming love of Jesus. We are to be a branch of Christ's own love, continuing the flow of empowering, nurturing goodness that begins in Christ the vine. Health and wellness comes through being connected to the vine, Jesus Christ. I had the opportunity to spend time with your membership and pastoral care committee this last week. And I am really impressed by the number of years and the skills and the breadth of care that this group of people within your community has um, it continued to be the vine and the branches, the expression of the vine through being the branches in your midst. You are such a fortunate community. And it was helpful to have that conversation coming into this week. Today is Mental Health Sunday, and we're coming into the, um, the National Recognition of Mental Health Week. So it's, it's time. And it's timely to be looking at how we're doing as a community of followers of Jesus, how we're doing individually. All of us have been living through this storm. I think I've mentioned before that quote, we've all been in the same storm. We haven't been in the same boat. <laughs> But it is time, it's a, sort of a time when uh, this week when we could do a self check-in, when we could do a group check-in about how we're doing emotionally, mentally. It's time that we can take advantage of the tools that have been distributed. Something like the bulletin insert that came with your order of service. Uh, this week, and I hope you got the order of service this week, um, tools to kind of check in and tools around how to best respond to folks who are having difficulties. So this was put out by the United Church of Canada in partnership with the United Church of Christ in the United States. And I know that the Canadian Mental Health Association has also been sending tools in different ways through social media. They're very helpful and gives us an opportunity to practice self-compassion for ourselves. And it's an opportunity to recognize and lean into the care of community, particularly if you're struggling. It may also be a time for a gentle check-in if you're concerned about someone who has dropped out of sight. 
if you've noted that the people you used to sit close to in church each Sunday are not showing up in the Zoom worship, and you can see who's here if you click on the participants button, those of you who are on computer, I know that they would appreciate a phone call. Let them know that you're missing them and that you're very much looking forward to seeing them when we're able to come together in person again. So there's personal work that we can be doing. We can also be assessing how we're doing as a congregation because congregations are healthier when they're connected, when the vine of Christ is holding congregations together and we're checking in with one another as congregations. And I know that there are some of your leaders at St. Andrews United Church who have been doing this work. I know that Jeannie Gilchrist recently attended a, a Ministry of Music gathering. And that Ministry of Music gathering, I understand, brought together five United Church regions to share best practices, talk to Jeannie about what she learned. Also, Beth Langhorst has attended at least one meeting, maybe more, I can't recall Beth, but you've attended a meeting of neighboring United Churches. And this was initiated, this meeting and this ongoing process of conversations with neighboring con congregations was initiated by Stouffville United Church. What a helpful conversation to be having now about how what's working. Can we all be helped? Can we all be participating in those ministries that are working in our neighborhood? And I know that Alan, as a represent Alan Holditch, as your rep regional representative, he's going to be attending a meeting this week. A uh, town hall meeting that was where leaders from um, leaders all over Canada have been invited to a town hall meeting to do a consultation around st the strategic plan for the general council office. Can you see how your leaders are connecting St. Andrew's United Church to the larger United Church? It's in this connection, personally, through your um, organization within your congregation that is the caring hand of Christ, and this connection of different levels of our United Church that help us nurture and care for the connection of the vine, Jesus Christ. To be connected is to be totally connected to love. It is to hold in our prayers and actions God's highest intentions for the life of one another. Christ's act of hope that your journey of life will be supported and guided by love. That's the hope for you and me, for us together in our local congregations and for the United Church of Canada and for all churches who claim the name of Jesus Christ. We are to be branches that enable love to flow freely and graciously in the love, in the lives where love needs to be known. And we know that there are a lot of lives that need to be touched by this love. And so in this spirit, friends, I'm going to invite you to join with me in prayer as I end this reflection time. It is one of the prayers that was produced for Mental Health Week. And it is the words of Reverend Dr. Sarah Lund. And so I invite you to pray with me. God of love, we celebrate that today you are still speaking a word of acceptance, wholeness and inclusion for all of your differently abled people. We give thanks for your call to the church to seek to live out Jesus' commandment to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. As we enter this time of prayer, we pause for a moment for the people and situations most on our hearts and minds at this moment. 
hold them and we will name them in the prayers of the people while we, we are doing communion. And we continue in prayer saying on this Mental Health Sunday, we pray for people who live with untreated mental illness and who are unable to find help and cannot afford appropriate care. We pray for an end to the stigma of mental illness. We pray for families torn apart by mental illness diseases and for families that hold on to one another during these times of illness. We pray for those who have lost a loved one to suicide. We pray for mental health givers, for scientific researchers, and for professionals who seek to bring compassion, treatment, and healing to those who suffer from brain diseases. We pray for children, teens, and young adults learning how to live with new, newly diagnosed brain diseases. We pray for people burdened by labels and stereotypes. We pray for people who are victims of bullying and discrimination because of their disability. We give thanks for the many gifts that people with mental illness and disease bring into the world. And we celebrate the creative genius of artists, scientists, authors, and scholars, business leaders, actors, musicians, inventors, and politicians who live with mental illness. Still speaking God, as the mysteries of the human brain unfold, we remain in awe of the intricate ways in which we are created in your image. May we be reflections of your love in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may it be so. And friends, we are preparing to come to the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we do, let's sing together hymn number 457 as we gather at your table, verses 1 and 3. time that we would be passing the plates if we were in your beautiful sanctuary. So virtually it is a time for us to give thanks for all that you give to this community of faith, your time, your talent, and your treasures. And so I have an offertory prayer of dedication before we sing our dedication. So let's pray. Loving God, Open us to a new world where there is no longer least and greatest, rich and poor, haves and have-nots. A world <clears throat> where all are treated as beloved, precious children. Until that day comes, 
Bless our contributions of time, talent, and treasures, and may they work towards the building of your new world. Amen. And let's sing our dedication along with Michael. We give you but your own. someone who is going to be offering her talent, Michelle Thomas. Thank you so much for being with us today. And Michelle is going to sing As the Deer, composed by Jay Nystrom, based on Psalm 42.1. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope all of you are doing well. I'm going to be singing As the Deer. Um, so hopefully I can get this running. Chills. Chills. <laughs> Thank you. Friends, we're going to move into our sacrament of communion. 
and as I mentioned before, the prayers of the people will be embedded into the, um, the middle of our time. And I am going to screen share my, uh, my screen. There's the end of uh, Punchinello's story. And <laughs> it's not letting me, let's see if, there we go. Communion, here we are. Uh, Lisa is going to be, uh, Lisa Bruce is going to be the, the, the congregational response person. And um, yes, I invite you to now enter into our time together at the table of Jesus Christ. Friends, God is with us. We are not alone. Christ is present here. And the Spirit is among us. Let us give thanks to God. In memory and in hope. You came to us in Jesus the Christ, who lived and loved this human life, taking upon himself every aspect of humanity, knowing joy as we know you, being tested as we are tested, and always reaching out to heal this world's brokenness. In him, we come to know your truth, to feel the life that is your spirit within us. So with all those who have gone before us, we sing your praise. Oh, holy, holy, holy God, oh God of time and space, all earth and sea and sky above, bear witness to Jesus, you have called ordinary people to be your disciples, naming them, and as us, your family on earth, you have blessed us with your presence and equipped us for your ministry. We gather at your table, O oh God, and we remember the last meal Jesus shared with those he loved. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, blessed it, and broke it, saying, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. After the meal, he took a cup and he filled it. And after giving thanks, he said to them, saying, this is the cup of blessing poured out for many. We remember the life and death of Jesus, and we give thanks for the love he poured out on all he, uh, he met. Sing Christ has died and Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Sing Christ has died and Christ is risen, Christ will come again. By these signs of bread and wine, we recognize the longing of our hearts for a time when justice and compassion will be the way we live according to the one we seek. Holy Spirit, hover over our lives, uniting us in these signs and strengthening us to live the resurrected life of Christ in the world. And we bring before God our prayers. I have some written words by Reverend David Sparks. And I would invite you to use the chat box if it's available. I see that my chat box is not available because I'm the one screen sharing. <laughs> but it should, 
the chat box, if you use it, uh, it should pop up. It will pop up for me, I believe. So let's pray and include folks who are on our hearts in the chat. You come to us just as we are, loving God, not as we would like to be. You encourage us to express our fears to a trusted one. You will not let us keep our anxiety to ourselves. You do come to us just as we are, loving God, not as we would like to be. You encourage us to hear the deepest fear of those near and dear to us. You will give us the words we need, the quiet time we need. And you do come to us just as we are, loving God, not as we would like to be. You encourage us to examine the source of our disquiet. You will go with us as we challenge the complacent. This we pray in the name of Jesus, the healer, wise teacher, and good listener. And we bring to you all those we carry in our hearts and who we wish to lift up in prayer. We pray for all who are part of the healthcare network struggling to manage. We pray for all in the education web, educators and students and family. We pray for all in the network of frontline workers, those who make sure we have food, those who continue to provide law enforcement, those who provide emergency services. And we pray for all who are struggling with isolation. And with me screen sharing, I am not seeing the chat. Is there another co-host who could say aloud what you're seeing in chat? There's a message. Jeannie, Jeannie is praying for Irene B. In silence, we bring before all those. We can use the chat, we can be in silence. Is there anything else in chat to read? No. Okay. Friends, we conclude our prayer for the worldwide Christian family. The family prayer that Jesus taught his followers. <clears throat> and today we will say these words. Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Friends, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most how, holy now and forever. And we sing our praise. Amen, amen, O oh, Holy One, Hosanna, and amen. Amen, amen, O oh, Holy One, Hosanna, and amen. Friends, Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the true vine. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All things are now ready. Friends, the gifts of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Let us share communion. And with Lisa, I invite you to say the prayer along with her, the prayer following communion. 
Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent into the world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. No, I, I won't read the book again. It's a good book. But <laughs> we are going to sing, though. We're going to sing For the Beauty of the Earth, our closing hymn, verses one and four. Um, right, sorry. <laughs> forth into our week out of this virtual lovely knitting together of our souls in worship we ask god of love plant us in the soil of your grace nurture us with the strength of christ the vine of everlasting life enlighten us with the wisdom of your spirit which flows through us today and all days Abide in us, that we may abide in you and live in your love. As we have worshipped in this time set apart, may we engage the world now in your holy name, creator, Christ, and spirit. Amen. Strong and true.
thank you so much for joining us today. If you're able to stay around for a few minutes to visit with one another, that would be lovely. If you have to leave us, blessings on your week.